Hi, and welcome back to One on One Zone. Today we are here with Mike Reuter, Chief Financial Officer of Hamilton Southeastern Schools. There's no doubt that schools, our high-performing schools, are the biggest economic development tool that Carmel and Fishers have. And there are reasons for that, and it's complicated. So before we discuss how we got into a referendum-oriented funding system for our public schools, it might be valuable to take a look back uh, to see how Indiana used to fund schools, when that changed, and why. So Mike, what, what happened? Sure. Um, I'm finishing my 25th year here at Hamilton Southeastern, and uh, the funding formula back in the early 90s was fairly complex in that uh, it tried to di uh, distinguish between the uniqueness between different schools. It was complex. Um, there was a portion of it that was funded with property tax and a portion of it that was funded by the state. And that formula evolved over the years and went through probably the most significant change in 2008 when the state decided that they were going to take the responsibility of the entire school funding formula and no longer would property tax fund the general operations of the school. And so what at that time we called the general fund, which was essentially paying for salaries and teachers and the administrators, uh, was assumed by the, by the state. And the formula that they used um, is, is based on the number of students that you have. And, um, and then also adjusted for complexity. And to simplify. What is complexity? Sure. Yeah, so complexity for the most part represents um, your, your um, demand, not your demand, but your free and reduced lunch population, okay. for the lack of a better term. It's, no, it's not a percentage of free and reduced lunch, but it is based on maybe the poverty reflection of the district. And so uh, each district then receives an adjustment to that base. And we are finally at a point, the formula is, is not near as complex as it once might have been, um, where people said school funding is, it, you can't understand school mm -hmm. funding in the state because you have this 10 page funding formula calculation and um, there used to be what are called minimum guarantees in the formula. So. Um, if, if there were a district, and, and not to pick on IPS, but if there were a district that was losing enrollment, um, that minimum guarantee protected them from a decline in okay. revenue. So if they lost a, a maybe 500 students, um, the funding formula still increased for them. They would still get new dollars. And so over time, with that kind of a model, uh, there started to be gaps developing between districts of similar nature. Um, and what I mean by that, even Fort Wayne schools and IPS may look similar in complexity, but the per pupil amount uh, was significantly different because Fort Wayne was not declining enrollment and, I, and IPS okay. was. And so yet IPS was continuing to get more dollars. But over time that was taken out of the formula and so the formula is, is, is uh, much less complex in that you just report your students and you get the complexity adjustment, but it's also not very forgiving. So if you're losing enrollment now, you don't have a buffer in Thank which you. to help you bridge uh, that decline. You have to really start uh, reducing expenses much more rapidly than you might when they had this minimum guarantee in place. But for a growing district now, uh, the reverse is true. It, when when you, if your enrollment's growing 500 students, then you're getting the money for those 500 students. They've also changed the timing of when we receive those dollars. It used to be funded on a calendar year. Now it's funded on a fiscal year. So we start July 1 with a new funding model okay. and it goes through June 30th and it's adjusted for what we report in the fall. So, um, so this funding formula was developed uh, and um, and we had these gaps between schools. You know, you had sim right. we had similar districts, similar size. It, it wasn't necessarily size, it was similar districts with similar complexity receiving different levels of funding. And actually Hampton and Southeastern challenged the state on the funding formula because the, the gaps became so large. And 
um, that over time then was corrected and everyone now, every school district, every public school district is funded with what's called a foundation. Everybody receives the same basic foundation Across number. Across the state, every No matter system. where you live, whether you're urban, suburban, rural, uh, size, doesn't matter. You're funded with that base level of funding. And then again, it's adjusted based on that complexity. And so um, there are still differences. And a few years ago, Hamilton Southeastern made a, a pretty significant legislative push to close those gaps again. Um, because you were being affected by that. Right, right. Uh, and it's, it's usually a surprise to most people when, when they hear that uh, the lowest funded districts in the state are Zionsville, Carmel, and Hamilton Southeastern. And it's in that order, Zionsville is the lowest funded district in the state, Carmel's the second lowest funded district, and we're the third lowest funded district. And it's, it's that complexity component um, that exists we're not getting as much of an adjustment as maybe an urban district might. 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 And so we, we made a legislative push saying we understand the formula and, and how complexity is funded, but don't leave us behind because the urban districts are obviously lobbying for more money and the suburban districts or lower complexity districts also need more, mm -hmm. more dollars to, to maintain. So. Um, so what we were lobbying for is more of a balance Adjustment. in that. And yet districts um, within Hampton County uh, have, have had the need to seek a, an operating referendum to, 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 to increase the dollars that we're spending in the classroom. Exactly. 